And you see here the data set of fares is already loaded. So the first thing we do, we click on statistics, say summaries, and say active data set. I want to have a basic statistics on all these uh, variables. And they are printed here. You see the variable is affairs, and the minimum number of affairs is zero. So there are individuals who did not have an affair. And the maximum is 12. These are the individuals who were um, busy. And the average number of affairs is 1.45. There are 315 ma females in our sample of 601 individuals and 286 males. So the number of females exceed the number of females males in the data set. The average age is around 32, and the maximum is 57. The minimum is 17.5. So they have been interviewing too many young people, but then this person has to be married at the age of 17.5. Again, it's 1969. Anything is possible. You know it from Polanski affair. Number of years married, right? Um, the number minimum is 0.125. Um, that's less than three months. Maximum is 15 years of marriage. Um, the ch variable children is coded as yes or no. Um, so 430 individuals said they have children, or a child at least, and um, 171 said no, no children. The On a scale of 1 to 5, a 1 being anti-religion and 5 being very religious, um, um, the mean value is 3, which is sort of say everybody thinks we are average. And with religiousness, if you get these surveys done in the U.S., it depends upon the state. I mean, if you go to Utah, you get a different value here. It will probably be 4.5. But here, I mean, in, you do it in New York, probably would be two. And this represents average of the average American. Education, minimum number of years is nine. Maximum is 20. Average a, years of education is 16. So you see this is at least university-educated crowd where the average number of years in, in, in schooling is 16 or greater than 16. Uh, occupation, I said, we will not look at. And the, the rating, which is the rating of your how happy you are in your marriage, um, the minimum is 1 and maximum is 5. 5 was very happy, right? These are the liars. Liars are here. The honest people are here. And the average is 3.9. So, you know. Okay, so this is the, the lay of the land, the basic data set, right? Now... Before you run a model, you can do a lot of tests and, and descriptive analysis uh, before you get to this, this multinomial logit model. Now, notice that the data set has a uh, number of affairs as 1 to 12, right? Um, in order to model this, I can e model it as a regression model, a, a ordinary least square where I s just say 1 to 12 is 1 to 12. It's a continuous variable. Or I can create a binary variable saying that if uh, uh, you have an affair, one, zero otherwise. It becomes a binary logit model. Or if I can have uh, a categorical variable where it says zero being um, if you have no affair, one being one affair, and two represents two or more affair. Okay? So let me just have a look at uh, the distribution of affairs, right? How many... Uh, Frequency distribution. Okay, that doesn't let me. Let me just check the missing observations first, right? I click here. You see, it is reporting that none of the variables has any missing data, which is very important to check before you begin doing your analysis. I think I should start with the histogram of the, the dependent variable. I would like to see um, there are 12 values. I would say 5 would be a good. I'll let it be auto. Let's see what it gives us. So here's the distribution. You see that uh, uh, between 0 and 1, 500 individuals are here in this category, and there are very few in the uh, two-plus category, number of affairs more than two. 
Um, and then there's this peak here and this peak here, 12. So I would say I'll be comfortable if I were to model this, I would say um, either using a binary logit model, coding the data as zero, having no affair, and one having um, at least one affair uh, or more, or coding it as zero, one, and two, zero being no affair, one being uh, one affair, and two being two or more affairs. So I need to create some data, um, some new variables. Okay, so other than that, um, if I were to do numerical summaries, and I want to know affairs by gender, so I click on affairs here, and I click on gender, and I say okay. So the results suggest that on average, females are uh, had 1.42 affairs in the last year, and males had 1.49 affairs in the last year. And if you look at the standard deviation, the standard deviation is, is very large, 3.3 and 3.2. So the mean and one standard deviation, if you plot these, you would see that the mean of uh, males is within the st one standard deviation of females and other way, um, other way around as well. So right looking at this, just looking at the standard deviations, I can tell you that there's not much, there's no statistical difference even between uh, males and females when it comes to having an affair. Um, I can check this using um, a t-test, and I can say affairs here, gender as a basic variable, 95%, and I'm assuming equal variances, uh, this, because the standard deviations are very close, but not the right way to really go about it, but who cares. Uh, and I'm doing a two-sided test. I'm testing either greater than or less than a hypothesis, I click here, and I get the two sample t-tests. Look at the t-value, minus 0.28. Remember the magic t-test value of uh, 1.96? Right? It's much lower than that. If you look at the p-value here, it's much higher than 0 0.05, leading us to conclude that statistically speaking, the average number of affairs uh, by males or females do not differ because the t-test rejects that hypothesis at 95% level. I can do the same test here, and see this, the beauty of uh, using R is that it's creating um, uh, a history of what we are doing, and I can actually copy this, control C, and bring it down here, paste it here, and instead of gender, I say children, just to be sure that Yes, so I click here, and if I were to just type children here, right, submit, did I do something wrong? Yes, I did. I need to highlight both, here we go. And you could see that the test is significant, but only at the 90% level, not 95%, and I were to do the numerical summaries, affairs, summarized by good uh, children. Here you could see that um, households or individuals with children, the average number of affairs was 1.67, and those who did not have kids, the average number of affairs was 0.9. So it tells you that having kids is sort of getting a license to have an affair, right? It says if you have two kids, you, you earned it, have an affair. 